Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the difference between the TACX outdoor PIR sensor and the Optics VX Infinity sensor. All right, I'm going to start with the Optics. This is what the unit looks like once it's installed. It must be installed 0.8 to 1.2 meters off the ground. That is actually the same for the TACX. Just having a look inside, I'll open it up for you. Open the unit, there's a screw at the bottom here, and you take this little cap off. And then we see the dual PIR sensors. The maximum angular width that you can sense is 90 degrees. You can reduce it, and the maximum distance that it can sense is 12 meters. Again, you can reduce it by shifting this bottom PIR sensor up and down. There is a toggle switch here for different levels of sensitivity, high, medium, and low. There are a few dip switches inside over here, which will give you the option for immunity. For example, this is the microwave version, so it has a microwave element in there and then it's also got anti-masking so this is the top of the range of the PIR of the Optex VXI range and you can put more than one of these sensors together and they can work as an all function or an and function meaning if you would like to get 180 degrees you'll put another sensor next to it and that one will, will go 90 and this one will go 90 so you'll actually need two sensors two units to get a full 180 degree view. Right, this is the TACX outdoor PIR unit. When I open it, you'll see also two PIR sensing parts. And the TACX is a little bit different to the optics. The first thing is these are actually independent from each other. You can align them like that, giving you almost 180 degrees. Now the reason why I say almost, it is advertised that it can give you 180 degrees, but if you turn these both at 90, someone could actually walk almost to the unit this way because there's no sensing at this point. So you kind of have to uh, uh, overlap these a little bit. The benefit of this unit is it does give you a variable sensitivity. It's not a dip switch. You can actually insert a screwdriver here and actually vary the sensitivity of the this is a potentiometer here of the bottom sensor and the top sensor so the way they've done the TACX this model this is the dual model is they've actually put two PRRs into the same unit with two individual settings which means you could make the bottom sensor less sensitive and the top sensor you could make it more sensitive and the, there are some dip switches here let's have a look here there are dip switches here as well, some for the top and some for the bottom. And the dip switches give you the option of the LED. There's an LED here when uh, it activates that there's somebody near the unit. And then it asks you for uh, the count. That's one of the features I like about this, which was present on the old Optics, is the count. It asks you, do you want one trigger or three? For example, if it picked up motion of a single trigger, then it won't activate the contactor but if it picks up more than three or more then it act initiates an alarm all right here are the power and the alarm wire connections just having a look at the TACX one of the benefits is that you can actually put it flat on a wall and then you only need one unit you can sense in the direction there 90 degrees and with a bit of overlap and you can sense here so that is why this unit is installed literally along the wall let's have a view along the wall because it's sensing in that direction and in that direction if we look at the optics you can see that i've put these this optics at a near a right angle for the reason that the optics is giving 90 degrees so it will give that whole area over there but here it'll, it'll watch the wall. But if, it, if I needed it to have a wider angle, I would actually need a second Optex VXI next to it. Looking at the details now, the Optex one, that's the white one, just by the way, that is the older generation. That was called the VX40. Very reliable, very hardworking sensors. And this is the newer range called the v, VX Infinity or VXI series. 
And just so you're aware, you can get the standard VX sensor, the AM, which is the anti-masking. That means if you cover the sensor, you will it will still activate an alarm. For example, if you put some tin foil over it or black cloth, which people do use to block infrared, it will alarm. So I always recommend getting at least the anti-masking. And then you get the DAM. This is with the microwave option for further immunity. Okay, in order for the sensor to operate, you need to, an intruder needs to break two of these beams. Now, please note that this is a PIR. It's not actually a beam. A beam is very narrow. This has got multiple sensing areas, and they've drawn it as though it's beams. That's just for explanation purposes. So there's a top beam area and then a lower area. In order to activate the sensor, both these uh, areas need to be, or these beams need to be um, uh, broken. So in order to activate the sensor, both these beams need to be broken. Now, you can see that these beams are in a 90 degree layout. That means that the sensor can sense in the full 90 degrees, which means if the sensor is on the wall over here, you've got 12 meters at a right angle, if you put it against the wall, then you've got all the way to there. So that right angle. If you put it against the wall facing this side, then you got to there. But what, what this diagram is showing is if you've put it in the resting position, the middle position, you're only getting 90 degrees. And then the blue is just if you bought the microwave option, which is the VXI DAM, and that's its sensing uh, area. Okay, so the reason why they have dual beam is so that its immunity is very high, especially for animals. So it actually kind of allows a weight category. For example, if you took a baby and you let the baby crawl on the floor, they would not activate, he or she would not activate the sensor. If you took a small puppy and the puppy was running around, it's not supposed to activate the sensor. But over a certain amount of kilograms, you know, that, that's telling you about size. A human then will activate the sensor. All right, and then I did show you in the video about how you can reduce the range. M maybe you don't want the full 12 meters, you can go 10 and so forth by shifting that bottom PIR sensor. So just to be clear, there are two PIR sensors on this optics. And remember when I opened it, there was one there and one there. And this one allowed you the option to slide it up and down, which actually reduces the sensing range in terms of the distance okay just the other details yes uh, it's very efficient um, it can handle up to uh, 9.5 up to 18 volts and it's very low current look the standard one is 20 milliamps but the anti-masking is 24 okay not much in it and then the microwave one is 35 milliamps so it's very efficient stuff and then uh, just some uh, tips don't install this thing in front of an air conditioner or where the temperature changes uh, rapidly like a bathroom if there's a bathroom window or so on okay now let's look at the tachex the one that i showed you is called the ms12 fe that is the dual tachex and just to be clear when you look at the sensor the tachex actually has two prs per section so that kind of means that it's like two vxis unless you buy the dual zone which is just equivalent to the tachex but if you buy the one that says up to 180 degrees you're actually getting two dual zones that means that there are two beams on each section here so it's like two optics all right this is just showing the principle of operation it's the same story uh, you have to break the downward zone area and the horizontal zone area and it doesn't only send out these two beams remember that these two beams actually are being sent out in a range a angular um, of 90 degrees and 90 degree angular space so if you're walking anywhere in this 90 degree area, that's why they're calling it a zone, then you will activate the sensor. But the beauty of the dual TACX is that you've got two of these. So you've got one on the top and one on the bottom. 
So that allows you to get what they say as up to 180 degrees. But remember I showed you in the video, in real life it's not really possible because they the one unit will go like that and the other unit bottom sensor would go there. You, there's still an open area here. So that is why I said you have to actually overlap it a little bit and it's not a true 180 degree but nevertheless it, it does solve the problem of having to buy two optics. This is the optics, this is the instruction manual, also available on their website, just telling you the details on how to install them. Very similar to the TACX. In fact, they're both very similar. Um, moving back to the, uh, the TACX, this dual zone one obviously is more expensive. So it's not like you're comparing apples with with apples. This dual zone one costs, well in my country it costs about 40% more, but then you're getting two of the, opt it's almost like two optics built into a TACX. In terms of the reliability, the TACX is become very popular and it, for the reason that you just, you can just get the variable angle 180 degree, the two zone, the two dual zone, and also a lot of people like the fact that you can vary the sensitivity with a potentiometer whereas the optics and not so much you have to use the dip switch and it's quite limited all right just looking at the specifications again very efficient you're looking at uh, 40 milliamp amps for two almost two optics and then uh, the voltage again can give its supply voltage it's 12 to 30 so it's actually uh, can take a wider range than the optics taking 12 to 30 volts dc all right, so that's the difference between the TACX and the optics in the dual zone outdoor PRRs. All right, just some of my own uh, comments. I've used both of these sensors and both are very good quality sensors. I don't want to start passing judgment on which is better and which is not. I have had false alarms on the TACX and I have had false alarms on the VXI. The optics I have been using for years. I used these ones and I, they must have operated hundreds of thousands of times and they have been in the sun and they've got discolored but they are still working without one day's, not one day's um, trouble in terms of uh, manufacturing issues or reliability or being left in the sun or rain the tech x i'm only recently been using now for the last year and so far it's also been very reliable i have had uh, very few false alarms but i also have had but let me just be clear there are, there is no better sensor that i've tested in terms of the vxi and the tech x i have tried other sensors or from other alarm companies and they don't come close to the TACX or the OPTEX in terms of reliability. They just don't. Too many false alarms. These are the best in terms of reliable but least false alarms. Okay, so thanks for watching.